So I'm embarrassed to even show you guys this, but I'm pretty transparent and I will be sharing with you the successes and the failures. And today I'm going to share with you the epic tomato failure this year. I started out really good. You know, we got them in the ground. I pruned them. I trained them. I started out really good, fertilized them with tomato tone. I, I took really good care of them in the very beginning. Then we got really busy with work and with um, our little irrigation project we've had going on and everything else and I just let them go. And they are a mess. They're just growing all over the place, which is really bad to make them susceptible to a lot of different bacteria, fungus, leaf blight, all kinds of different things. So that was my failure. And then I didn't prune at all, just a little bit in the beginning. So that, that was not good either. And I have not sprayed anything at all on these tomatoes, nothing no organic sprays or anything so i am being taken over by bugs now my romas and my sun gold cherry tomatoes have done great i've got a lot of those but my slicers i've got maybe 10 out of all of these plants i just have not got any they've all i go to get them and they're all just eat up with bugs or um rotten already or just in terrible shape you can see them i mean they're just they're terrible there is a green stink bug right there the black one is a baby green stink bug the one beside it is the baby green stink bug as it begins maturing and then there is a mature green stink bug. These things are all over my tomatoes this year. Just covered in them. This is evidence of hornworm damage. Hornworms have been here eating my plants. I don't see any right now, but as I've been seeing them, I've been picking them off and feeding them to the chickens. They love them. A leaf-footed stink bug. So this tomato, you can see a baby stink bug on here. But what they do is the stink bugs sting it, sting the tomatoes like that. You can see they're, where they're like bruised and then they just start rotting before you can even pick them. I believe this is signs of blight. Late blight, I'm assuming. Not 100% sure on that, but I don't doubt it. My tomatoes have also, they're all calcium deficient. You can see like this one. I mean, you can see, well, you can see the bruising on it where the stink bugs have stung it. But you can also look at it and see how it's all mottled looking. That is not the variety color or anything by no means. It is um, calcium deficient. Shelly told me it was calcium deficient. And it's not necessarily, I don't think that there's not enough calcium in your soil which that could be a problem but I think it's also when you're when you have lack of rain and you're in a drought then the uh, tomatoes cannot take up the calcium from what I've read I think I'm right so I've had one issue after another with my tomatoes insects like crazy stink bugs hornworms um, calcium deficiency, blight, all kinds of different issues. So I have not hardly got any slicers out of my garden at all. I think the only slicers that was tough enough to withstand my neglect was Mortgage Lifter. 
which is this one. The Mortgage Lifter has a really cool story. It's an heirloom tomato, and in the early 1930s, there was a man named Marshall Biles. He lived in West Virginia. He owned um, a small repair shop at the bottom of this big mountain, which the mountain was always known to make trucks overheat. So he was pretty smart in his strategic business location because um, when trucks would overheat on the mountain, they had to roll back down the mountain for and have radi uh, radiator repair. So he was pretty smart in that. But he got his nickname as Radiator Charlie because of that. Um, the Great Depression was coming and he started looking for other ways that he could, you know, make money. He had absolutely no experience in growing tomatoes, but he decided he wanted to develop a large meaty tomato that could help feed families. So he took a baby syringe and he cross-pollinated um, the German Johnson heirloom tomato with about nine other different varieties. And he worked on this, on developing this, these seeds in this tomato for about six years until it finally met the criteria that he was looking for. Um, and when it did, he started selling the seedlings for about a dollar each, which was a lot of money in the 1940s. It was so popular, it was such a popular tomato that people drove hundreds of miles just to come purchase these seedlings and he ended up being able to pay off his $6,000 mortgage with the money just from the tomatoes. And it was named Radiator Charlie's Mortgage Lifter Tomato. So that how it, that's how it got its name. So today I am going to start taking out, I'm just gonna get rid of them. I'm just gonna take out all these tomatoes. Some of them that look like they may potentially have some possibility with some good looking green tomatoes on it. I might keep those and come in and spray some neem oil or something to try to annihilate some of these insects. But for the most part, I'm just ready to yank all these out. My squash is done. It's over with. I've already been pulling those out. I've got, um, okra my okra is coming on really nicely it's doing good we've I've already got okra put up in the freezer so the okra's doing great Jean came in and pruned all of the lower leaves of the okra off it helps the okra to produce more and better plus you can see what you're doing and what you're picking no surprises come out and grab you um, but by pruning the lower levels of the okra, it just helps them to the energy to go into producing more fruit. So he did that for me. I've got lots of eggplants that I need to come in and harvest. These are just little baby eggplants. I'm excited to try these. There's lots of them in there. And this one is called Hansel. It's a different kind. It's like a longer eggplant. So I'm excited to try these. My zinnias are pretty. They're starting to play out a little bit, some of them, but they still look good. My sunflowers are pretty. They're doing really good. But I mostly just wanted to share with you my tomato failure and next year I'm going to do better. I'm collecting cattle panels right now so I'm going to grow them differently on cattle panels so that that should make it easier for me to be able to train them and prune them. And um, I'm researching how to better grow tomatoes organically. So I'm working on that and my goal for next year is to have tomato success instead of tomato failure.